Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this recording, I'd like to show you what a myopathic EMG looks like. In other words, I'll try to explain what happens to the motor unit potential when it is recorded from a patient with a muscle disease, using traces taken from actual patients. Examples of myopathies include OPMD, CPO, and occlusion body myositis, but obviously the list of myopathies is quite long. As always, if you are unfamiliar with the basic principles of EMG, please watch my EMG primer first. What we measure when we stick a recording needle in the muscle is the electrical activity of motor units. The concentric needle electrode has a recording surface of about half a millimeter. This means that only a handful of all fibers belonging to a motor unit will contribute to the motor unit potential. Fibers closer to the needle will have a large contribution than fibers further away. When we see them up, we can measure a number of things its duration, its amplitude, and the number of phases. And for all these parameters, we broadly have the following reference values. No longer than 50 milliseconds, no larger than 2 millivolts, and no more than 4 phases. As I have shown you before, I will now show you what a normal EMG looks like. Have a look at the morphology of the motor unit potential. See if you can recognize and distinguish different motor unit potentials. Also try to evaluate the recruitment pattern at the end of the video when the patient is asked to apply a bit more force and the screen fills with a large number of MUPs. So to give you an overview of the pathophysiology, what happens when we stick a needle in a myopathic muscle? There is no loss of motor units, in contrast to a neuropathic EMG, but instead the muscle fibers themselves are sick and less functional. This leads to a number of things. Some muscle fibers will die, resulting in smaller motor units. Some of muscle fibers will have trouble generating an exit potential along their membrane. The end result is a smaller, short duration polyphasic motor unit potential. Important to note is that in some myopathies, for example, inclusion body myositis, muscle fiber splitting and muscle fiber regeneration do occur, leading to the presence of muscle fibers that are not connected to an axon. These muscle fibers will also start producing spontaneous muscle fiber activity, which is not shown in this video, but can be found in previous recordings. I will now show you some real recordings from actual patients with a myopathy. That was all for now. I hope this video was useful for you to help you understand how the pathophysiology of myopathies affects the EMG and help you recognize these conditions when you perform EMGs in the future. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I hope to be back soon to explain fasciculation potentials, complex repetitive discharges, and myotonic discharges in videos in the near future. See you soon.